All right, so what we have here is the EasyBook X1. So a quick rundown on the specs, we got an Intel Gemini Lake CPU, N4100 with four cores, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes plus 64 gigabytes of storage. Yes, there are two different storage devices. We're gonna be taking a look at them. One of them being an SSD, the other being an EMFC, and the usual dual band, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all that good stuff. But what makes it special is it's got a 1080p IPS 11.6 inch display, which is actually a very awesome form factor. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the ports, open this up, and take a look at what's inside. All right, so on the left side, we got a headset jack, volume controls, and the power button, as well as the left side microphone. And on the right side, we got a Type-C port that's also the charging port, a micro HDMI, power LED indicator, micro USB OTG port, the right side microphone, as well as the micro SD card slot. And on the front sides, we got these stereo speakers, which actually sound pretty decent. And on the back side, we got four rubber feet and an expansion slot right over here, which is currently occupied by the SSD. All right, so there we go. While you're opening this, make sure you don't lose the power button. All right, so take a look inside. It looks very impressive. And the thermal solution here pretty much matches up with my testing and my experience with this thing. Usually these type of laptops, they heat up a lot. And uh, even the bigger ones, they actually have much worse thermals than this thing right here. I was expecting this thing to be really hot, but it actually surprised me. It has done a fantastic job at keeping this thing cool with very minimal roasted nuts, if you know what I mean. Now the expansion slot right here has the SSD, not the MMC. So the MMC is still built into the motherboard, but uh, that's nice because we have some built-in storage as well as expandability, which is pretty cool. We got the Wi-Fi chip right here and you can see the awesome thermal solution. So with that said, let's go ahead and unscrew it and take a look inside even further. And here it is in all its glory. It looks pretty awesome. And there seems like about three or four contact points for this heatsink plate. But so far the chip here is actually getting some very nice cooling. Although it's not the best, you could probably definitely improve it even more by adding some thermal paste. But yeah, it's being covered by this little piece of thermal pad. And you can see the chip here, it's actually pretty large. Now there's another chip right over here that's being cooled with this little pad right here. So these could be the North and South bridges. Who knows, I actually don't know. But moving on, we get the 64 gigabyte buy one chip. So it's right here, all your data is right here if you lose it. Oh well. And right over here is what I presume to be the RAM, which by the looks of it, they had plans for an 8 gigabyte model. Ooh, someone is at the door. And it happens to be Jimmy. Hey, what's up? Just rolling around in his ball. So there you go, if you want to improve the temperatures, you can go ahead and add some thermal paste between the copper plate and the chip itself. Very nice. Actually, two more things. Here's a look at the battery. It's a 3500 milliamp hour battery, 7.6 volts, and the actual Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas are right over here. So we can see there are two lines going along, and the speakers here are actually pretty nice. They got their own enclosures. That's where they get their loudness and bassiness. Pretty good. The magnets are right over here. They're actually too powerful. When you open up the lid, you have to use two hands. There's no way around it. But yeah, these speakers are pretty impressive. They're not the best, but they're pretty loud and they actually give a pretty decent amount of sound. Good enough for video watching. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together. Then we can go ahead and fire it up. All right, so as I mentioned before, it is pretty hard to open up the lid and it actually takes two hands to open it up. Otherwise, you can't. It will get easier over time, but it is definitely pretty hard. If you wanna open it up with one hand, you gotta stick your finger in there and open it up just like that. Now, what you could probably do is break the magnets in half and have less power and it makes it easier to open up. But uh, hey, it's all up to you. So I might do that later on. But moving on, here's the laptop. It's pretty tiny. Again, it is 11.6 inches, IPS, 1080p panel. Looks pretty nice. It's decently bright. And the form factor is pretty great. It's been a while since we have seen something this small. And most of those were tablet hybrid laptops. So it was a tablet on top of dock. And that's what you had with big fat bezels. But this time, of course, you can do a full 360 and watch videos and do all that kind of stuff. Very easy. No problems there. Now a quick look at the front here, this is not a button, which is a good thing. Because usually on other tablets this gets in the way, you can accidentally press it and your start menu comes up. And it's pretty annoying, and really nobody's going to use that. Moving we've got, you got your typical webcam right here, you know, it gets the job done, nothing crazy. And right now it's uh, doing some updates. The hinge here is pretty solid, it doesn't feel like it's going to give up anytime soon. But it does feel pretty decent, out of the box. Now moving on to the top of the keyboard, we got some indication LEDs. We got power, caps lock, and num lock. 
and the keyboard itself feels pretty good and overall it's not too bad to type on, especially for this form factor. You do have some volume controls, brightness controls and all the usual stuff right here. You got the delete key in the right position and standard signs backspace, enter, shift and air keys in the proper expected positions. Nothing crazy, it all works out and the FN key is right over here. And here's a quick typing audio sample of the keyboard. So there you go, it's pretty silent. And now if we go ahead and take a look at the spacing, the spacing here, it's not too bad. But what usually makes the biggest difference is the travel distance. And in this case, the travel distance isn't much. Uh, it's pretty much the thickness of the key going into the keyboard itself, and that's about it. And depending how hard you hit it, you know, it's gonna be pretty silent. But overall, for the price and form factor, it's a workable keyboard, and it's definitely not terrible. Now the touchpad on the other hand, it's actually pretty good. It feels pretty nice, it has a nice texture on it. It's uh, not too rough, not too smooth, just perfect, easy to glide on, and overall easy to click and navigate with. And if you're wondering if the display has any delay, well right now I got a Rival 600 hooked up through a Type-C adapter. It is in fact very, very responsive, almost no delay whatsoever. So if you're someone who's doing some critical work on this thing with a proper mouse, then you're not going to have any issues. But either way, I can tell you right now that the latency here is pretty damn impressive, especially on the display. So the touchpad does have some latency, but it's not bad. I have seen much, much worse in previous laptops. Alright, so now let's go ahead and talk about the display more in depth. The brightness levels on this thing are actually pretty decent and they can get pretty bright compared to many other laptops and tablets out there. It is indeed really nice to see that we can get a nice bright display that has very nice vivid colors in fact and um, it does come with a pre-installed screen protector as you have saw in the beginning of the video. Now are there any problems like dead pixels or light bleed? Well um, for light bleed yes there are you can probably already see it right over here. So as you can see on the top of the display here, there are three different hotspots and they can be very, very noticeable when you have a black background or a black scene. Uh, but in regular use, you're most likely going to forget about it. It's going to disappear with the scene and it's going to blend in. But uh, yeah, it can be very annoying if you're someone who's looking for a perfect display. You may get a good one. You may get something worse. So here's full brightness. And in fact, you actually have multiple levels of brightness adjustment for those times where you want to use it at night. So you could definitely get that working for you. If you want to extend the battery life, you can also do that. But yeah, it can get very dim. It can get pretty decently bright. And overall, it does produce some very nice colors. Now, the display here is a bit on the cooler side, so you can easily adjust it in the Intel graphics control panel. Here's a quick look at the performance speed of the drives that are built in. On the left side, we have the MMC BioWin chip. And on the right side, we have the FreeC SSD. And as you can see, the FreeC SSD has doubled the performance of the EMC chip. So there you go. So there you go, that's how it performs out of the box. The average temperatures that we are hitting usually is around 76, 80 degrees max, but it rarely hits 80 degrees, which is pretty impressive once again for this laptop. That said, this is stock settings. Now, of course, if we go ahead and jump into the BIOS, we can see that there's pretty much nothing to adjust here. Just some boot settings, no adjustments for the power states or the CPU clock speeds or the GPU, nothing at all, none of that. If this BIOS was unlocked, we probably would have been able to push some nice frame rates and make Rock Leak run much faster. But at the same time, we'd be also limited by the RAM. We only have 4 gigabytes of RAM, so we can't really allocate any more for the integrated graphics. Now moving on to the touchscreen, which we should have talked about at the beginning of the video. 
it does work pretty well. And if you want to watch videos and uh, browsing websites and zooming in and zooming out works as intended. Now, of course, right now we're running on Reddit. There are some videos that are playing, some ads, and it's doing a pretty fine job of getting around it. Now, that's, of course, when it does work, because there are some major issues about this thing that we're going to be talking about in just a bit. As for Wi-Fi, two and a half rooms away from the router, this is the speed you can expect on the 5 gigahertz network. Usually, I would get 180 and 16 megabytes per second for download and the upload. So there's no issues in terms of range. And the last thing to really talk about here would be the battery life. So you can expect around three and a half to four and a half hours of battery life, depending on which mode you have it in and what you're doing, and around two and a half hours for charging it. So uh, very standard stuff, not much to boast about, but there you go. So the conclusion, should you get this thing and do I recommend it? Well, unfortunately, definitely not. This thing is full of issues and here's what's going on here. Basically, when you reinstall Windows, you'll encounter a couple of things. One of them being the keyboard, touchpad, and touchscreen not working when you put this thing into sleep. When you close the lid, you open it back up, all those things stop working for some reason. Everything else works. Windows is not frozen, it still works. If you plug in an external mouse or keyboard, it will work. But those things will stop working completely for some reason. I am not too sure why. Maybe I'll find out somewhere in the future. And then when it does work and you have restarted your computer because you couldn't wake it up after having your controls not working, when you are in Windows and you go into 360 tablet mode and you flip it over, the keyboard touchpad disabling feature will not work. So the keyboard will still be active, the touchpad will still be active, and when you're holding it in the back, like so, you'll be still touching the keyboard and touchpad and causing all kinds of nonsense on the display here. So if you want to try your luck with it, go ahead. Just make sure you don't reinstall Windows or make a backup of the drivers. Either way, that's my experience with this thing. I would have loved to recommend this thing, but it's full of issues. Uh, again, it could be just my unit, but that is all for this video. So if you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful, let me know in the comment section below and subscribe from content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.